This is the first of three videos which makes up the calculation syllabus for PM120 and PM130. The way that you should use these videos is to watch them prior to attending a session which will be arranged by your individual tutors. Within this video there are worked examples of the type of calculations you may encounter during the course of your studies, as well as a series of homework questions for you to actually try out your new knowledge. When you attend the tutor session, you will have the opportunity to go through these questions with your tutor, clarify any aspects of the presentation that you found confusing, as well as practice further examples of these types of calculations prior to the formative assessment. This first video is about moles, molarity and percentages. So the first thing that we really need to discuss is why do we actually need to define what a mole is? Well, substances come in all different shapes and sizes. And as scientists, we often need to make up solutions which will have a certain ratio of different substances in order for a reaction to proceed. Or in the case of enzymology, we may want to discuss how many moles of a substance are converted in a unit of time from an enzyme. So it's really important that we've got a standardised measure through which we can actually measure the amount of a substance. So what is a mole? Well, if I were to ask you how many are in a pair, hopefully most of you would be able to tell me the answer is two. Likewise, if I said how many are in a dozen, a lot of you would tell me that the answer is 12. But if I say how many atoms are there in 12 grams of carbon-12, while some of you may know the answer off the top of your head, others will have to refer to a textbook or go and look on the internet in order to provide me with the answer. So what is the relevance of this number, 12 grams of carbon-12? Well, within 12 grams of carbon-12, there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms of carbon. And this is also known as Avogadro's constant. And what this tells us is that essentially any time you have 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms or molecules of a substance, you will have one mole of that substance. The symbol for a mole is simply mole, which can be abbreviated to MOL. And what it allows us to do is to define, using this equation as an example, that two moles of hydrogen, H2, will combine with one mole of oxygen, which is O2, to yield two moles of water. And this is a concept we were discussing a little bit earlier in terms of being able to define different amounts of substances which will combine with one another in order to produce a reaction. In reality, though, how useful is Avogadro's constant? It would be incredibly difficult and time-consuming if every time you needed a mole of a substance you had to count out 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms or molecules. So we've defined a different term which is much more useful, and this is the molar mass. Calculating the molar mass is actually very easy. The first stage is that you need to know what the chemical formula of the substance that you have is. In this case we're using glucose as an example, which has a chemical formula of C6H12O6. Next, you need to look up the atomic masses for the different elements that make up glucose. So in this case we have carbon, which has an atomic mass of 12, hydrogen of 1, and oxygen of 16. If we multiply the number of atoms of carbon, which is 6, by the atomic mass, 12, and repeat for hydrogen, which is 12 times 1, and oxygen, which is 6 times 16, we come up with a final value of 180. So the molar mass of glucose is 180. Linking these concepts together is this equation. The number of moles is equal to the mass of a substance that you have divided by the molar mass of that substance. And some of you may find this visual representation a more useful way of remembering this. So to calculate the number of moles down here in the left hand corner of the triangle, you would take the mass which is on the top divided by the molar mass, which is in the bottom right. If we wanted to solve the amount of substance we have and we know how many moles we have, we would rearrange to find mass, which is on the top, so it would be equal to the number of moles multiplied by the molar mass, because both those terms are on the bottom of the triangle. So what are the units of molar mass? Well, hopefully you know that the base unit of mass is grams, and as we defined earlier in this presentation, the base unit of moles is the mole. So therefore, we need to rearrange our formula, which is moles equals mass divided by the molar mass, to find for the molar mass. And doing this, 
we have the molar mass is equal to the mass divided by the number of moles. So what are the units? Well, we know that the units of mass is grams, and we know that the units of moles is moles. So the units of molar mass is simply the grams per mole, which can also be written as g per mole, or g mole to the minus 1. And all three representations mean the same thing. On this slide we have a series of worked examples. You can pause the video at this point if you would like to attempt these questions for yourself. However, we're just going to work through these one by one. The first example is for sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is fairly simple. We have one sodium atom with a mass of 23, one oxygen at 16, and one hydrogen at 1. And if we add up all those values, we get a final mass of 40. However, this is only half the answer, because if you are required to give the molar mass of a substance, you must also give the units, which as we defined, is grams per mole. The second example is for potassium phosphate, which is slightly more difficult. In this example, we have two potassiums with a mass of 39, one phosphate with a mass of 31, and four oxygens with a mass of 16. Combining those, we come up with a final value of 173 grams per mole for potassium phosphate. This last example is for magnesium chloride, and some of you may not have seen this representation before, but what the 6H2O means is that the magnesium chloride molecule has been hydrated, and for every magnesium chloride, there are six water molecules attached. Working through this, we have magnesium with a mass of 24. We have two chlorides, each with a mass of 35.5. And we have six water molecules, which is comprised of two hydrogens at one and one oxygen with a mass of 16, meaning that the mass of each water molecule is 18. Adding those values up, and we come up with a final value for magnesium chloride with six water molecules of 203 grams per mole. Moving on to the second part of this presentation, we need to start talking about molarity. And this is something that students can find confusing because moles and molarity, although they sound similar, are actually very different. The molarity is the number of moles of a compound dissolved in a litre of liquid. So the number of moles is the amount of a substance you have. The molarity is actually the concentration of those moles in a litre of liquid. So molarity is a concentration of solute in solution. The units for this are molar, which can also be written as capital M, moles per litre, or other derivations of that, which is moles per L, or moles L to the minus 1. And all of those mean exactly the same thing. A one molar solution, which can also be written as one capital M, meaning one molar, has one mole of a compound dissolved in a litre of solvent. So if I were to dissolve 180 grams of glucose, so if you remember the molecular mass of glucose is 180, in one litre of water, I would have a one molar solution of glucose. Now this is where some of you may get confused, so we'll go through this in a little bit of detail. If I were to pour 500 mils of that one molar solution away, what is the molarity of that solution? And what you have to think about is, have I actually changed the ratio of the number of moles to the volume? And you can assume that the number of moles is equally dispersed throughout the whole volume. So actually, I haven't changed anything. All I've done is reduce the amount of volume I have by half, but in doing so, I've also reduced the number of moles I have by half. So the molarity of that solution is still one molar. However, how many moles, i.e. how many mole molecules of glucose, do I actually have in that 500 mils? Now that of course has changed, because as I said, by pouring away half of it, I've reduced the number of molecules of glucose by half as well. So in this case, I only have 0 0.5 moles of glucose left. So although the molarity hasn't changed, the number of moles has. So what happens if I need more or less than one litre? You're not always going to need to make an entire litre of a solution for an experiment. 
So perhaps a more useful definition of molarity is that one molar solution is one that would have one mole of a compound in a litre if you had a whole litre of it. So if we have a couple of examples here, what happens if I actually needed to make up that 500 mils of one molar glucose solution from the previous slides? Well, I could make up that one litre and pour half of it away, but that's very wasteful and it's not good practice. So we need to be able to calculate how much glucose we would need in order to make 500 mils of a one molar solution. The way that we do this is we define that one litre is a thousand millilitres, so therefore we need half a litre. If we only need half a litre, we're going to need half the number of moles in order to create that one molar solution. So if we multiply 0 0.5 by the molecular mass of glucose, which is 180, we come out with a value of 90 grams of glucose dissolved in 500 mils of a solvent to give us 500 mils of a one molar glucose solution. In this second example, it's a little bit more complicated because we only need 136 mils of a one molar glucose solution. Again, in this case, we need to work out how many moles we're actually going to need. So we divide 136 by 1,000, so this is the volume that we need, divided by 1,000, so that would be the number of moles we had if we had a whole litre. So therefore, we know that we have 0 0.136 moles required. Multiplying the number of moles by the molecular mass, 180, tells us that we need 24.46 grams of glucose in 136 mils in order to produce a one molar solution. So likewise, what happens if we don't need to make a one molar solution? Well, what happens, for example, if I needed a litre of a 0.2 molar glucose solution? In this case, we need to define that 0 0.2 molar means 0 0.2 moles per litre. So therefore, multiplying 0 0.2 by the molecular weight tells us that we would need 36 grams of glucose in one litre in order to produce a 0 0.2 molar glucose solution. The second example, again, we now need 238 mils of a 0 0.3 molar glucose solution. Again, we start by defining that 0 0.3 molar means that there are 0 0.3 moles per litre. But because we only need 238 mils, we create a ratio, which is 238 divided by 1000, and we multiply that by the molarity of the solution. And this tells us that we require 0 0.0714 moles of glucose in order to create this solution. Multiplying 0 0.0714 by 180 tells us that we need 12.852 grams of glucose dissolved in 238 mils in order to produce a 0 0.3 molar solution. Flipping that on its head, what happens if we already know how much substance we've dissolved and we want to calculate the molarity? Well, in this example, we have dissolved 12 grams of sodium hydroxide, which has a molecular weight of 40, in 400 mils of a solvent. And we need to work out what the molarity of that solution is. Because we have 12 grams in 400 mils, if you think back to our definition of what a molar is, i.e. the number of grams per litre, we create this ratio where we have 1,000, which is the volume of one litre, divided by the volume that we actually have, which is 400 mils, and we multiply that by the number of grams of sodium hydroxide that we had in those 400 mils. And that will tell us that if we had a whole litre of that substance, we would have 30 grams of sodium hydroxide present. Dividing the amount of sodium hydroxide we have by the molecular mass, which is 40, gives us a value of 0 0.75, which tells us that the molarity of that solution is 0 0.75 molar. Likewise, we can actually calculate what the molarity of water is, and many of you won't have actually stopped to think about this. But we can tell that 1,000 mils, or 1 litre of water, weighs approximately 1,000 grams, or 1 kilogram. The molecular weight of water is 18, so we've got two hydrogens and one oxygen. So we can work out the number of moles that would be present within one litre. And this is simply done by the mass divided by the molar mass. So dividing 1,000, which is the mass of water of one litre, divided by the molecular weight, which is 18, would tell us that we would have 55.5 moles present in a litre of water. And because of our definition 
of molarity, which is the number of moles that would be present in one litre, we can simply say that because we have 55 moles in one litre, the molarity of water is also equal to 55.5 molar. Moving to the final part of this presentation, and this is a concept that most of you probably won't have covered at A levels, but it's actually quite important in science, and this is percentage. There are three terms that we are going to need to define here. The first of which is the percentage weight by volume. Now this is a mass concentration, so it's the number of grams per 100 mils. If I were to take 10 grams of X and dissolve it in a final volume of 100 mils of Y, I would have a 10% weight by volume solution of X because I have 10 grams of X in a final volume of 100 mils of Y. So that is what a percentage weight by volume means. Likewise, with the percentage volume by volume, this is a volume concentration. So this is the number of mils per 100 mils. If I took 15 mils of X and I mixed it, to a final volume of 100 mils with Y, I would have a 15% volume by volume solution of X because I have 15 mils of X in a final volume of 100 mils. The final one is the percentage weight by weight and this is the mass fraction. So this is the number of grams per 100 grams. So if I took one gram of X and dissolved it in 100 grams of a solvent Y, I would have a 1% weight by weight solution of X. Now the weight by weight is probably the least commonly used term, but you will come across percentage weight by volume and percentage volume by volume quite frequently. Working through a couple of examples here, if I have 18 grams of sodium hydroxide dissolved in a final volume of 100 mils of water, what is the percentage weight by volume of that solution? Well, going back to our definition, the percentage weight by volume is the number of grams per 100 mils. So in this example, we have 18 grams of sodium hydroxide dissolved in 100 mils of water, meaning we have an 18% weight by volume solution of sodium hydroxide. In the second example, I need to make a 70% volume by volume ethanol solution. I have 100 mils of that solution. So how much water do I need? Well, thinking of our definition of volume by volume, that is a volume fraction, so that is 70% volume by volume ethanol, which means that I have 70 mils of ethanol in 100 mils. So therefore, 100 minus 70 means I need 30 mils of water. So I would mix 70 mils of ethanol with 30 mils of water, giving me a 70% volume by volume solution of ethanol. In this last example, we're going to combine several of the concepts that we've covered in this presentation so far. I've been provided with 100 mils of a 0.1 molar glucose solution, but I want to work out what the percentage weight by volume of that solution is. To do that, I'm ultimately going to need to calculate the number of grams of glucose present in this 100 mils of 0.1 molar glucose solution. To do that, I need to remind myself that the molar mass of glucose is 180 grams per mole. And I need to define that 0.1 molar means that if I had one litre of that solution, I would have 0.1 moles of glucose. Because I only have 100 mils, you take 100 divided by 1000. So that's the volume that I actually have divided by the volume that would contain 0.1 moles and I multiply that by the molarity which is 0.1 and that tells me that in the 100 mils I have 0.1 moles of glucose. Multiplying the number of moles to so 0.01 by the molar mass which is 180 shows us that we have 1.8 grams of glucose in this 100 mils of solution. And thinking back to our definition of percentage weight by volume, that's the number of grams per 100 mils. So if I have 1.8 grams of glucose in 100 mils, I will have a 1.8 percentage weight by volume glucose solution. 
On the following slides are a series of homework questions for you to attempt prior to attending your tutor session. You can of course pause the video as you're going through this in order to write down the examples and to actually then go through and try and do the calculations for yourself. When you get to the tutorials, if there is anything that you are unsure of or that you want additional clarification on, please make sure you ask your tutor and you'll be able to go through some additional examples of those types of calculations. The first questions are just basically looking at the molar mass of a series of substances. The second question is looking at different volumes of one molar sodium chloride solution. The third question combines different volumes with different molarity, so you're going to need to combine the two concepts there. The final set of questions covers the percentages concept that we went through at the end of this presentation. To try the questions, don't worry if there are concepts you do not understand at this point. You will have the opportunity to go through them with your tutor in the individual tutorials. But please make sure you come to those tutorials having attempted the questions so that you do know where the gaps in your knowledge are. And then in the tutorial, we'll be able to go through additional examples of the concepts that you are struggling with. Thank you for listening.